Welcome back. I'm Zanati Kuma and you're watching Stockwatch this week and joining us for a review of the week's stock performances and answers to your stock-related questions is Caroline Kremen from AdviceWorks. Do send your questions via SMS to 41392. Email stockwatch at bdtv.co.za or tweet us at Business Day TV using the hashtag Stockwatch. Thanks so much for your time, Caroline. Uh, Caroline, um, I haven't really found anything that is uh, keeping the market underwater at this point. And, but we've had a lot of trading in the red this week. And I'm wondering if this is maybe just uh, something that isn't significant that we should be worried about, that maybe it's just the start of the holiday lull mm -hmm. that we could see because of less volumes at this point? So we're definitely seeing less volumes and it's going to get worse obviously next week and the week after. But there is quite an important meeting taking place next week. That is the final Fed meeting of the year. It is going to be a very important meeting. Uh, today's jobs numbers are very, very important numbers because, of course, what we've seen in the last month in November is the market rallied mm. quite strongly. And it was on the basis of the fact that there were no, going to be no further interest rate increases. I think that is probably correct. But also on the supposition that there would be interest rate decreases in the first half, possibly even in the first quarter of 2024. Yeah. Now, that is not what the Fed has been guiding towards. And so there's room for disappointment. So I think this is where the bit of nervousness is running. I think people are yeah. rushing ahead. There's fear of missing out. And the Fed meeting is there. Those jobs details are there this today. And those jobs details can really swing the markets when they come out at half past eight today. Yeah, and it's really important that you also mentioned that guidance because for the large, for the most part, the markets have really priced in that the Fed is not going to increase interest rates. But of course, now yeah. the tone will be what yeah. the the investors will be looking out for because already the markets pricing in cuts in the first quarter of next Great. year. Yeah. And, and I think this is the narrative that's now changed. It's not, are they going to increase? We kind of, I think pretty much everybody's on the same page yeah. that they're not going to increase again. But now it's, when are they going to decrease? Yeah. Is it going to be first quarter, first half, or second half? Mm. And depending on what those jobs figures show, it might guide us to as to where they're going to be leading in yeah. the first half of next year. But I think there's been a little bit of irrational exuberance there. So there might be room for disappointment. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, talking about disappointment, um, well, uh, this is a stock that has disappointed people um, mm. for a while now, and that's Sassol. But I feel like it, it's, it's also quite polarizing, right? Because a lot of people still pegging Sassol to the oil price. Um, mm. But also some saying, you know what? we can't really because they also have this chemicals business but now no. also that chemicals business is not like it's doing well um yeah so a, a number of people saying it's uninvestable what do you make where are you uh, on on w which side of the fence are you on <laughs> well <laughs> i think everybody kind of knows because i am really not a vessel fan yeah and it really has been uh, it's one of those companies where they you know there's every so often and quite often more often than not in fact there are issues which impact its performance and it's always something extraordinary it yeah. goes on and on and on never changes i think this most recent set of results was the one where it was kind of normal so mm -hmm. i tend to have a severe reaction to companies who keep on doing that and they've been doing that for a couple of years as an older broker myself, you know, when went way back when, when there were still exchange controls before you were even born, I think probably, um, you know, Sassel was the one way South Africans could get access to dollar type assets and oil assets. So every portfolio manager had it on their, on their, on their portfolios. The thing is now, if you want an oil exposure, you can take your foreign allowance and you can go and get it. You can get your dollar exposure elsewhere. So it really is only those chemicals businesses. So when I look at those chemical businesses, the question is, would you want to be in that industry right at this point? Um, you know, it's an important industry, but it's also an industry that's got headwinds. You know, the environmental mm -hmm. lobby is, is very much against this. The slowing economic environment is, is, is kind of against this at this point. And quite possibly, there are better managed and superior assets in the chemicals business that you can acquire overseas. So the necessity for this as an investment, mm. I failed to see it. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. 
I, I hear yeah. you. It is a very polarizing stock. Well, let's move on to a mm. completely different sector, uh, payments. Uh, the viewer is asking, would you buy either MasterCard or Visa? Uh, I feel like the, these, these stocks are actually, there, there's a lot of optimism from investors on uh, these stocks. But w do you have a view on both of them or do you have a preference for one of them? Well, um, and I must say, I haven't looked at it in the last year, yeah. the, the preference for Visa and MasterCard, but we did look at it as a house in quite a lot of detail. Our preference was definitely for Visa, mm. but it wasn't a strong preference. It wasn't like, don't buy MasterCard, buy Visa. It was just, okay. just marginal. Both of these companies are cash printing machines. Mm. Um, mm. They, they really are. And, you know, as we go more electronic, um, you know, there are going to be other players like PayPal and so forth. But these guys have got market dominance and they're going to be dominant for a while. And um, like I said, just print money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. I hear you. I hear you. Um, coming back home, there's a question on Rimgro. Um, mm. Yeah, so question, and actually this was asked yesterday, but the reason also why I'm bringing it back is because of the one of the assets that they own, uh, CIVH, which owns Massive, which holds Dark Fiber Africa, um, and and what's the other one, Vumital, and also the Vodacom yeah. deal. Let's just start off with Rimgro. As uh, okay. you know, a holding company as a whole, would you be going mm -hmm. into it? Uh, because also what was interesting is that the viewer said that the share seems to have remained stagnant. Do you exit? Mm -hmm. Or do you, you know, do, do you invest, exit and invest somewhere else or do you stay in the stock? Look, I think if you've held it since time immemorial, you're pretty flat. Um, mm. You know, there was a time when it was doing very well and there was a, there was the discount between the value of its assets and share price wasn't that deep. Um, I can't remember when things started to unravel a little bit, but, um, you know, you, you, the view is quite right that it's been very flat for, for a long period of time. And I think, importantly, in that period of time, investors' appetite for holding companies has deteriorated. So I always think that a holding company like Remco, even though it's got very good assets, and the assets you mentioned, I really think, are the jewel in its crown, there's always going to be that holding company discount. Hmm. And that said, these are nice assets. You can't really get hold of in any other way. There's very little of interest in the South African market at the moment if you're a RAND investor. And the discount is actually quite nice. And if this deal does go through, and I believe it's been pushed towards the end of 2024, mm. that again is a very cash generative annuity based revenue. And um, so I don't think, I think you, my, my answer to that in the short of it is, is that yeah. you're not going to expect a massive uptick in this, but a steady eddy, nice assets, and probably is a little bit undervalued uh, at this point. Well, I mean, yeah, one of the reasons, as I said, why I brought it up is that Standard Bank is giving a massive that holds dark fiber and Vumatel 25 billion rand in investment to expand um, yep. their operations. And of course, Vodacom now wants a piece of that, but obviously that deal has not been approved by, yeah. I guess, the highest authority that does need to approve it at this point. And I wonder about Vodacom with or mm. without this asset, because there's clearly a lot of interest and a lot mm. that, ne that, that is going to be done on, on that front. Vodacom at this point, with or without that asset, would you go in? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me there. Probably not in a rush, yeah. unless I was looking at a dividend, yeah. uh, because I don't see a lot of growth there without this corporate action. Um, because yeah. I don't see too much growth with this corporate action. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, these are these are um, utilities. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're not... Then they're not growth stocks. And, and, and that's if you a, want a utility with a duty revenue, that's where you buy the share. Yeah, and it's it's really quite interesting because, I mean, all these telecoms uh, uh, counters have been under pressure this year. So clearly there needs to be uh, mm -hmm. more sources of growth there. So, yeah, we'll see in the next few months uh, in yeah. the next few months how that plays out and if there can be significant value unlock, unlock for Vodacom, mm -hmm. um, Vodacom crossing fingers yeah. that that deal does go through.
Uh, well, there's a, yeah. uh, there, was, there was a question uh, also that came in on Tesla, Meta, ArcelorMittal, mm -hmm. Transaction Capital, Sibania, <laughs> Stillwater, Pick and Pay and Spa. That is a lot. Uh, the viewer asking, what do you think of these counters? Yeah. I am aware that many of these are a turnaround story. Let's actually start off with Pick and Pay and Spa. Of course, those being the laggards in that uh, food retail sector with ShopRite yeah. being... Uh, the, 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 the jewel there. Uh, do you think that there is a significant uh, turnaround story um, in those counters? Yeah, look, there's always the possibility uh, thereof. I would say whenever you're buying any company, if it's a turnaround story, yes. look at the first thing, is, is look at governance. I think for me okay. is, is the important governance and reputation. And if there is still a bit of a smell around mm. any company stay away you know there are enough opportunities to to look somewhere else um, yeah. and if you if you mean if you just doubtful that they've all sorted out the issues kind of stay away then look at the economic environment you're in at the point and is that company appropriate for this economic environment because you don't want a company turning itself around in an economic environment which is really unsuitable for it because it's going to be facing additional headwinds which it probably cannot afford to face at that point yeah. in time so i'm gonna park far and, and pick and pay separately there but, but i'll look at something <laughs> like a meta my meta is very polarizing uh-huh as is tesla quite frankly but yeah. um so, so meta polarizing um there is always with people either hate it or they love it but yeah. a lot of those issues do seem to have sorted itself out but you're sitting in an economic environment now where you know there's slowing advertising so mm. so do you want to bet on it mm. possibly not right now um, you mentioned transaction capital mm -hmm. the reputational issues there i don't need to go into it yeah you, you talk out. about that yeah, smell can, and there's yeah. a lot of it there <laughs> there was. Don't worry. <laughs> it's, you, there, there, there are enough good investment opportunities that you don't need to go digging in the weeds. Well, uh, let's zoom into transaction capital there for a bit because uh, a very interesting thing that the market seem to have uh, reacted over quite positively is them saying that they will be looking at uh, unbundling and separately listing we buy cars. And I mean, we know that that is one of the good businesses yeah. Um, that's still in that stable. And I'm wondering then, you take out We Buy car, Cars, which is a good business in that stable, where then does that leave transaction capital? Because it leaves them with SA Taxi and yes. Newton and, so and Google. If, mm. if you're a shareholder and you buy into that, it's going to unbundle. You're going to get a part of the good and a bad bit. Yeah. So you're still going to own both. Yeah. So you, you're betting on the fact that when they unbundle that, that, that good bit, that you're going to get the value unlock. Yeah. And again, if you look at the We Buy Cars in the current economic environment, apps are reported today. Yeah. And it's quite interesting because if you see, look at apps' as results, they are seeing rising impairments still, mm -hmm. uh, that expansion, and they're also seeing um, slowing loan growth. So how is that business as a standalone? Is it the right environment for it, no matter how good it is? So mm. evaluate based on that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. Arcelor Mittal, um, that's also an, another one. Also had a conversation <laughs> earlier on it, and it is, it, it's quite worrying looking at the contagion effect of you know, closing down the uh, long steel business. Um, saying that 3,500 jobs could be affected there. And it seems that they cannot outrun the macroeconomic environment because, I mean, in this kind of environment, companies, you look to companies that have kind of a self-help, that go into self-help mode yeah. to kind of gain resilience against the environment. But at this point, uh -huh. even that didn't work. What do you do with ArcelorMittal at this point? I really don't know, and I would really be surprised if it is listed in a few years. Um, don't come after me, Arsenal. <laughs> I, think, I think you've just got to think of it logically. This is a heavy industrial in South Africa yeah. where we have huge infrastructure issues every which yeah. way, water, electricity, and, and then ask yourself, are those going to be resolved imminently? And again, yeah. 
The answer is probably no. So do you want to be a turnaround in that environment? It's going to be really, really difficult for us long term. Mm. Sibanya is still water because, I mean, this is uh, one that has yeah. also been uh, hit by the current environment. We know the uh, pressure that the PGM prices have been mm. under. Um, but then long term, you look at this uh, strategy and you really look at a good growth story long term. With Sibanya still water, do you trade it or do you go in for the long term or not? Well, I'm going to reference Angler because Angler also came out with its results today um, mm. or a uh, trading update, I think it was today. Yeah. Where, you know, and it's clear from, from, from their, their guidance is that, you know, the platinum palladium is, is not the right place to be at this point. Mm. But it's also clear from the guidance as well you can infer from their guidance that they don't think it's going to be the right place to be for a while. Mm -hmm. So do you bear in mind that is still a large part of uh, Sibanye's um, assets. Then on the strategy going forward, the strategy going forward is sounds wonderful. You know, yeah. these new um, minerals that, that, that they're going to find. I kind of view it in the same way as, as, as AI. You know, it's like, yeah. will it deliver? Mm -hmm. And is it going to, is this, so I haven't, I don't think we've really seen, I mean, they've chased a couple of deals, uh, lost a couple of deals, mm -hmm. and so I don't, I see the strategy, I hear it, yeah. but I don't see it yet. Yeah. So again, for me, if, uh, you know, when you see a lot of the good commodity company prices being depressed, are you going to go for something that's a maybe? or something that is yeah. already around there. And this is, again, where I would defer to things yeah. that are possibly a little bit more conservative, like Anglo or even a Billiton. Yeah, and they, and they need a lot of money. Show me the, show me the money. Show first. me the money, exactly. <laughs> they need a lot of money for that strategy as well. <laughs> well, let's get into your stock pick for today, <laughs> Caroline. What will it Absolutely. be? Absolutely. Well, this is quite possibly a turnaround of well, the turnaround of source. So it is Mondi, um, one of the best uh, paper producers in the world, um, a multinational, and there's been quite an overhang on its share price because, of course, Mondi had operations in Russia. It has now managed to sell sell that operation. Um, as a result, they're going to get a lot of money and they're going to pay out a special dividend. So, you know, the slow economic environment might not be great for this company, but we're all, always going to use their products. And, you know, a special dividend in the current environment where I don't think we're necessarily going to get a lot of capital growth anywhere is... You know, please take it. If it's offered you, please take it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and for your analysis today, Caroline. Really appreciate it. Uh, that was Caroline Kremen from AdviceWorks.